This week, smash hits, smash hits, and extreme mic testing. Yeah. Thursday was BBC Music Day, an annual celebration of the power of music to change lives, with 2,000 events across the UK and 100 broadcasts on TV, radio and digital. But it's important to remember that not everyone experiences sound in the same way. For example, this week is International Week of the Deaf. So, we met twins Herman and Heroda Bahain. Now they're both deaf and although they love dancing and they love going to deaf raves, there's obviously a lot about music which they don't experience. Until now, we joined them when they tried on a prototype shirt which can turn music into a whole body experience. We were born hearing and when we were seven, we became deaf at the same time. Everything changed. We lost our hearing, we couldn't speak anymore. We felt quite isolated. We can't hear all the different frequencies and elements to a song that a hearing person could hear. So like, we can hear vibrations from the bass, but the, the rest of it is it's kind of a blur. Everyone else will be sort of really going for it on the dance floor and sometimes I, I feel like I'm just behind. I just have, I've missed a trick, I've missed something that everyone else knows, you know, like they know the song. Sometimes if you put your ear up or your hand up against a wall or a speaker, you can feel the bass better, but you don't get a full, you know, a, a full spectrum of sound from that. If you think about going to a concert, especially for a deaf person, what they would feel would be the vibrations coming through the floor or through the air and just feel very strong the bass around their stomach. So we brought a brand new software that captures music, interprets it and then transforms it into the touch data. And it gets sent wirelessly to the shirt. We are subdividing the different frequencies of the music into four different areas of the garment so that they get a very detailed experience of what is happening so that they can feel the the mid-tones, the high tones, the treble, the bass, and really provide this very rich music experience for them. <laughs> oh my god, wow, it was emotional. Yeah, same, I got emotional. It was a strong reaction. You can feel so many different sort of frequencies. It feels like you've got different kind of beats, so you've got different pulses going at different times. So like, this is what I'm feeling in one place, and then you've got vibrations in a different place. Yeah, it's like there's different instruments playing. I can't, I can't describe it. It's just, you have to experience it, really. And then you'd get it yourself, but it's so different. This has become, it's, it's created a new level of detail to music and it's like you can hear, you feel all these different elements to it. It's awesome! It feels like something that should have happened a long time ago. Like, I played, I played a rave, a deaf rave. You just play the bassiest cuts you got and it was, it was sick. Like, it did that, things like that, it just brings you closer to them rather than having to go into like that patronising area. If you're in a wheelchair or if you're, if, if you're deaf or whatever, you get put into an area. With things like the jacket, you, you put in with the crowd, do you know what I mean? What deaf community do a lot of the time, we just talk, because if you can't access the music, you are just socialising. But as soon as I gave my friends this shirt to try on, all of them, their faces just lit up and they all were like, wow, I can really dance with this on. I think it's really important because, you know, we're all about accessibility and it's an experience. It means you can feel the music with this, so it, it will change your life, I think. the beautiful rolling hills of the South Downs in Sussex.
something which I'm about to see from a whole new perspective. And then you've got... Up there. I'll be filming myself while I'm up there, but the most important thing for today is this microphone, which I'll be taking up with me. Why? Tell you what, let's go back to the beginning. If you've ever tried to record sound outside, or even if you've tried making a phone call on a breezy day, you will know that wind is the enemy. Even the slightest breeze causes turbulence on the mic, which you hear as a pretty deafening roar. Now, the best way to solve this problem is to stop the wind from getting to the mic by using a big soft bit of material like this, something which we in the trade call a fluffy or a dougal or a dead cat. The bigger the fluffy, the better the wind is blocked out. But there are times when a large microphone just isn't convenient. Like, for example, when you're doing backflips through a snowy street or travelling at speed over not very much snow. Energy drink maker and extreme sports nuts Red Bull wanted to record their athletes up close and personal. So they asked hearing aid, headphone and microphone designers Jabra to make something small, light and cable free to stick in places where there's no room for a big fluffy. Jabra's research into noise cancellation and sound enhancement goes on here at their headquarters in Copenhagen. And this is where the x mic was born. Because they need to test their devices in lots of different audio conditions, they have different rooms with different acoustic characteristics. For example, this is the anechoic chamber, which is completely acoustically dead. This is the reverb chamber where they test how good their noise cancellation is. And this is the wind tunnel, where currently we have a breeze of two meters per second. But if we increase that to eight meters per second, you should start to hear a lot of rumbling on my microphone here. It should be quite unpleasant to listen to. And if we take it all the way up to 15 metres per second, my guess is that you will really struggle to understand what I would say on this important microphone here. However, if we switch to the X mic audio, I'm hoping you should still be able to hear what I'm actually saying. This really is maxing out the wind tunnel and even the prototype X mic is struggling, but obviously it's still doing a lot better than our mic. Part of the secret is in the soft fluffy fabric, part is in the round shape which reduces turbulence and part is in the digital signal processing DSP algorithms that subtracts the wind noise from the recording as it's being made. What we've done is we've learned through years and years of testing what is wind frequency and what is other sound frequency. And then we set those DSP algorithms to make sure that we block out the frequencies that we believe are wind. What frequency range do we want to block out and what do we want to keep and let through? So the x -Mic Mark I has done OK, but not brilliantly in the wind tunnel. But how will the Mark II do in the wild? We'll find out a bit later when I can finally get my amateur backside off the hill. Hello and welcome to The Week in Tech. It was the week that Facebook said it would not fact check politicians. The social media giant says posts by politicians are newsworthy and should be seen and heard. Amazon announced that Alexa will soon be able to bring the voices of Samuel L. Jackson and other celebrities into your home. Their speech will be computer generated based on voice recordings provided by the stars. <laughs> and the Port of Antwerp has unveiled a hybrid hydrogen diesel tugboat to replace the gas guzzling diesel only ones usually used to guide container ships. Remember Boston Dynamics Spot the Dog? The bot that can climb hills, pick up objects and open doors is now available to rent for less than the cost of a car, though you may not be able to use it to do the school run. But it's also shared the headlines this week with the company's gymnast bot. Atlas does handstands, rolls and jumps that could rival an acrobat. 
And finally, in other robot news, could these shape-shifting creations provide a whole host of useful tasks? Shapebots are controlled by a central computer and camera trackers and hope to protect you from hot drink spills on tabletops, create moving 3D maps and more. That's all very well, but I'm still waiting for a robot to be able to just do my laundry and cook dinner. Sound is something that's around all of us all the time. When we identify those sounds as signifying danger, we've evolved to recognise those sounds and react to them. But in the modern world, we've become ever more used to isolating ourselves from the world around us. For most people, recognising those sounds is something we do every single day, but getting devices to recognise different sounds is something that has traditionally been challenging. Now, one UK-based company claims to have cracked that problem. Audio Analytic has developed a new technology to recognise a wide range of sounds that can then be used as a trigger for a number of different actions. Now, what this technology does is it uses software-based artificial intelligence to identify and recognise everyday sounds, and it can be integrated into a number of products. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how it might work. One kind of common application is in headphones. You're walking down the street, for example, and there's an angry dog nearby. Caution, there is a dog barking nearby. Increasing transparency. So what it would do in that situation is it would recognise the dog barking, would lower the music or cut it out altogether in your headphones and warn you that there was a dog nearby. Another application that it might have is in smart speakers. Most of us have these things around the home now and it can be arranged to listen passively for things like a baby cry. Sounds like a away. Don't worry, little one. I bust daddy's watch. Fundamentally, sound recognition is very different um, from speech recognition, and we've had to come in and solve some of those fundamental differences. Baby crying sounds very different to another baby crying. There's a huge diversity from when they're six months old through to when they're you know, sort of two years old. But all of that we refer to as baby cries, so there's a, some commonality, and we need to teach those machines the, that commonality. But as we know, AI can only ever be as good as the training data it works with, so they have to capture these sounds live. Naturally, we wanted to witness this firsthand, and what better way to start than with a couple of very good dogs. This is an anechoic chamber, or in this case, a semi-anechoic chamber, and it's designed to absorb sound. And we're here to record these two beauties, hopefully barking on demand. So these waveforms here that I can see on this screen are the representations of what's coming off the microphones in there. And in the middle is the actual dog bark threshold that the system is listening for. And when it identifies them, you should hear it activate. Hey Monty, I can hear you barking. As it is late and you're home alone, I'm going to alert your owner. Turn on the lights and play some jazz because I know how much you like it. Nice. But dogs, as good as they are, are only the beginning. The space here can be used to record an enormous range of sounds, ranging from the dramatic to the more low-key. So there's no shortcuts to this sort of thing. It is literally, you have to have the data sets. So we've had to go out and collect all that data. So we have the world's largest collection of audio data, 15 million audio event files that help us train that uh, technology itself. And of course, we couldn't leave without taking a sledgehammer to some windows. All in the name of technology, of course. That was Paul. I'm back at the South Downs Hills, where it's time to test the Jabra X Mic Mark II, designed to reduce wind noise in extreme sports and record high quality audio straight onto this tiny device. I'm pitting it against the best professional mic we have that's even vaguely portable, in that it's cabled to a zoom recorder and all stuffed into my pocket. Exactly what you don't need in extreme sports. 
And for a more realistic comparison, I'll also record sound on my phone and on my GoPro. Now, all I have to do is run. Run. Run like the wind. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Ah! Wow! So, we're up, and the wind is definitely blowing in my face. We're flying at about 25 miles an hour at the moment, so it's time to see what all of the mics sound like. Although you can hear my voice on my phone and on the GoPro, the wind noise is pretty intrusive. It would certainly blast out the subtleties that Jabra was specifically asked to capture. So how about our high quality mic with all of its cables versus the relatively small X mic with no cables and onboard recording? So at the moment, I have no idea what these two microphones are actually recording, but what we'll do when you watch this is we will switch from this normal mic to the Jabra X mic. And I'm gonna guess that you will instantly hear the difference. You should hear something that's a lot clearer and with very little roar of the wind noise. Yeah, although my voice is pretty clear in both recordings, the background wind is definitely reduced. So much so, in fact, that we can hear Jess all the way behind me, telling me about paragliding in the Himalayas. What is paragliding at 12,000 feet like? Is it a different experience? Yeah, everything's just a bit more full on in the mountains. So the development of the weather and your understanding of the clouds and just loads of amazing birds, huge, massive vultures and the like. Interestingly, the X mic is not going on general sale. Instead, Jabra are using it as R&D for their existing, more down-to-earth products. If we can get a microphone to work at 100 kilometers an hour down a ski slope, you can bet that uh, in an office, in a noisy office, you can make a very good phone call without any noise disturbances. Well, I'm about to cause a disturbance in this freshly ploughed field. So wish me luck. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Right, we're about to land, are we? Yeah, we're going to come okay. in and land. Okay. We come in with nice speed, and then like a bird landing on a branch, a couple of, just before we touch down, I pull the brakes and... Uh, uh, uh. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Ah! Oh, <laughs> I smashed it without smashing it, <laughs> which is brilliant. Easy landing, it's easy landing. <sighs> The Ziggo Dome, Amsterdam. Performing here is the legendary Sir Elton John, currently on his farewell tour. But he's added a little something extra to each night, and it's called Peaks. It's a device that allows you to mix live music as it's being played in front of you, boost the volume of instruments, listen to nothing but Elton's voice. But how does it work? First of all, the music is recorded onto Peaks' system, where they break down the 95 channels of audio coming from the stage into five different musical categories. Those five mixes are then sent all the way here to the back of the hall and sent out again as radio waves by these transmitters. But to make sure that everyone gets a signal, five more transmitters have been permanently installed above the stage and a tiny microphone on the device listens to what is being played on stage so it can sync up with the mix that your device is being sent. So when you adjust the levels, it will be in real time. The, the people are paying a lot of money for talk concert tickets and you, people in the funny seats, if you could just give them a better quality sound, then it's gonna make everybody happy, isn't it, you know? Right, Elton is about to start performing. Let's see how this thing fares. are crisp, the guitar, you can really hear it. But because I'm too close to the stage, I can't really distinguish what I'm hearing on stage and on here with the drums. 
So what I'm going to do is go to the back of the hall and see how it fares there. It works even better further back from the stage. And to listen to the mix you make, you are given normal earphones instead of noise cancelling. So you don't lose out on hearing the atmosphere too. For people who are hard of hearing, uh, which essentially you do have uh, locations in the concert hall where they can come and they can, you know, hear, uh, this allows them actually to be anywhere in the concert hall. Peaks is not for everyone. There are people where they have already a superior sound quality and they do not wish uh, or need to have it improved. Uh, but there are people that will want to experience uh, concerts in a different way. So it's really allowing for everyone to opt how they want to experience the concert. And that is what we found. Not everyone enjoyed using it. It's an amazing system and it's, I even let people next to me listen to it. But it's like, you have to be very sure of yourself to use that system as an artist. <laughs> the music was very loud. You have to put that even louder. So it's going to be like, like you have nails in your ear. Yeah, it's really good. The sound's really clear. Um, I'm not sure out and John concert's the best concert to, to use it at because the sound mix is really good here. You heard the atmosphere around you, but in the meantime, you are isolated as well. Oh, yeah. Elton! Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, you know? So, as innovative as this kit is, it may not be for you. You may just want to go to a concert and experience it organically. But having the option to mix your favourite artists while they perform in front of you, this might be a new direction in live music. Omar Metab mixing music with the maestro. Brilliant. And that's it for our audio tech special. Hope you've enjoyed watching and listening to it. And don't forget that throughout the week you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter at BBC Click. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. I try running too soon.